Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 7th, 2024. Let's get into it. <laughs> Woo, boy, I tell you, it's, uh, it's Christmas Day in Russia. I want to wish all the people in Russia a very happy Christmas. I wish I could have made a video on Christmas Eve, uh, which was uh, January 6th. Uh, this is the Orthodox uh Christian religion that exists throughout Russia that most Americans, uh, American Christians don't even know that Russia is a Christian nation and that they celebrate Christmas on January uh, 7th. Uh, so let's let's just get into the news. Uh, boy, this is going to be a punch right through it all. I, <laughs> you know, I haven't got too much going on. I mean, we've got some good videos. Uh, let's see. You know what? Let's let's get into the first video which is uh, R.F. Kennedy, and uh, he just kind of goes back in history, and he talks about the fact that uh, how we betrayed Russia and uh, how the war uh, came about. Let's watch the Kennedy video right now. So how would you go about sort of reducing our footprint overseas, and perhaps how could we uh, get out of this war in Ukraine? I think it's, quite, it's going to be quite easy to get out of the war in Ukraine. I mean, we now know, we found out in the last couple of weeks, that President Putin and uh, President Zelensky, our Prime Minister Zelensky, actually signed an agreement in uh, April of 2022, and, uh, and that the Russians were complying with that agreement, but they had already began removing their troops from around Kiev, and that uh, you know, Boris Johnson was sent there clearly, you know, at the behest of the White House to sabotage that agreement. And that's not the first time we've, we've done that. He ran as the peace candidate. He got sent, this is a guy who is a comedian and an actor, which I'm not disparaging because that's what my wife does, so I'm not going to say anything bad about it. But he was not, he was not a, uh, you know, he was not a politician, a veteran politician. Why did people vote for him? They voted for him because he was the peace candidate. And the Ukrainian people wanted peace. That's what they wanted. And as soon as he got into office, you know, Victoria Newland was over there pressuring him along with people from the ultra-naturalist right within uh, Ukraine to pivot and to walk away from the Minsk Accords. And, you know, we've now killed 350,000 uh, young men over there that had been killed in that war. And I'm not an apologist for Vladimir Putin. It was, it's a brutal war. We also need to look at our role in, in the provocations going back to 1997. Wasn't that interesting? Wasn't that interesting? And so, you know, most Americans don't understand the origination of the Ukraine war. And how it all took place, uh, I, I think Kennedy did a pretty good job explaining that there. So that was the first video. So now we get into um, Zelensky needs men. And <laughs> boy, I, I could have captured a bunch of videos of them. Uh, they are raiding nightclubs. Uh, they're pulling uh, men out of uh, 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 school uh, and, 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 you know, basically conscripting them to send them to the front lines. You know, I wonder how much more the Ukrainian people are going to put up with uh, this, uh, conscri this forced conscription of their, their young people. Uh, because I think they're down to, what, 25 years old or so, I've been told. But I think it's, a, it's much younger than that. Uh, of course, the average age uh, from a Ukrainian soldier I heard was like 43 or 48, somewhere around in there. Uh, you know, it's how many, how many people in the women, the women are going to the front lines, pregnant women, uh, uh, People with limbs missing, uh, uh, people with Down syndrome. I mean, uh, it's a, it's a, it definitely a democracy in Ukraine. Definitely, uh, definitely a democracy in Ukraine. Uh, so, um, getting on to local stuff, uh, banks are crashing. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of more crashes in the works. I haven't got all the details. I've just uh, received some information on that. So, just letting you know. Uh, so. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do about this? Well, I bought two more Mountain House uh, beef stew meals uh, from uh, Amazon. They were ten, I think, were ten ninety five a piece. Uh, that's four meals for me. Uh, I try to pick up a couple each month. I have a whole Foot Locker full of uh, Mountain House food. 
Um, so if and when the, the stuff hits the fan, I, I should be able to eat pretty good for, well, probably about a year <laughs> at this point. And, and I buy the Mountain House, uh, and, you know, everybody, you, know, you can go to Patriot, Patriots for Us or Patriot Supply or whatever you want, wherever you want to go to get your, your uh, prepper food. Uh, but I, I like the Mountain House because if I want to go out in the forest and just take my little backpack stove, I've, you can get the backpack stoves at Cabela's or REI or wherever you want to get them. And you can go out into the forest and uh, with a little propane tank, you can heat up a little bucket of water, dump it down in there and just go out for a hike and enjoy nature and, uh, and you'll have a nice meal. Uh, or if you're camping or backpacking, which is what I used to do before I broke my neck and have all sorts of medical problems. All right, and then of course uh, I purchased uh, some more powdered milk because uh, you know what? I, I found that I go through a lot of milk. I don't know about you, but you might want to get some powdered milk. Uh, I bought the big container, uh, it probably lasts me about six months so that I can put some cream in my coffee. Uh, uh, you can buy the, the canned cream or whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. All right, let's get back into the news. So the UAE, Saudi Arabia, China, Brazil, Russia, uh, they, they have all uh, de, de, divorced themselves of the dollar completely. Uh, so we can see that the, the dollar's days are numbered. I hope you're getting ready. Buy some silver, buy some gold. That's the only advice I have. Buy some uh, mining stocks, uh, definitely some oil stocks. I, I bought a lot of uranium, but uranium's kind of gone up. Uh, let's, let's just keep going. So the, the, the advice that the, uh, the ninja gave, um, uh, the economic ninja, he says, hold on to as much value as you can. Because everything is going to devalue, whether it's gold, silver, platinum, uh, oil. I mean, uh, when, when the crash happens, everything's going to devalue. But think some things are going to hold value. I, you know, it's up to you. I, I, I don't have much confidence in Bitcoin, but a lot of people do. You do what you want. So gold is sitting at about over $2,000 an ounce right now. You do what you want. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not buying at that price. I'm, I'm more looking at silver. Uh, and this particular month, I focused on debt, which I hope you're doing too. I focused on paying down my debt. I didn't buy any gold, silver, platinum. Uh, I did buy a, a FSM. I did put a little bit more money into that stock. So, Neocon Nikki. <laughs> Nikki Haley. I think she's toast, man. I mean, that woman, uh, she talks out of both sides of her mouth. I'm going to tell you what, uh, there is, there's just too much stuff going on i don't think i have a video about her well let's watch the trump indictment video here let's check that out i mean i got more indictments than al capone did you ever hear of al capone it's true alphonse capone the great alphonse capone but i have worse than al capone okay and he's about as bad as you get right he's a big guy this was never in my plan being indicted for it. I got indicted. I had a period I was being indicted so fast we didn't know where the hell they were coming from. If I flew over in my beautiful plane, I flew over a blue state, the next day I'd get served with a subpoena. Wasn't that great? So that's Trump talking about all the indictments that he gets. <laughs> of course, of course, Nikki's now saying that they're all justified. So that's how I wanted to get into Nikki. Uh, troops in Syria and Iraq will be obliterated. Yes, yes, indeed. I, I that was a, a footnote from some of the videos that I've seen. Um, it just there's too much anger at this point. I mean, when you've got well, at this point, I want to say about thirteen thousand dead children in Gaza. Uh, probably about thirty thousand dead civilians. Uh, most of them women and children. Uh, the Israelis are committing genocide on a massive scale. The entire world uh, hates the United States uh, and Israel. Uh, I just I just don't see where that's going to go. Uh, and so let's get into the Yemen protest. Uh, my God, think about January 6th, okay, because we just had that day passed. And, uh, you know, a lot of videos on that. Let's look at a protest in Yemen about what's taking place in Palestine. 
Now to Yemen, people in the nation's capital have taken to the streets in a show of support for Palestine. Local media estimated that two million all across the country took part in similar demonstrations. The main square in Sana hosted a sea of demonstrators you can see for yourself with many carrying Palestinian flags. A representative of the Houthi movement addressed the crowd saying that its forces were ready to fight against both Israel and the US. American naval ships have been striking at the group's forces in the Red Sea following a number of attacks on ships linked to Tel Aviv. We heard from some at the rally who explained their motive for being there. We will support our brothers in Palestine. We tell them they are not alone. God is supporting them and we are with him too. The Yemeni people will not tolerate any American intervention or guardianship. We are ready for confrontation. The aggression against Yemen has been US-led from the beginning. We are prepared for everything. We realize that if we do not make a sacrifice now, we will later when we are oppressed and defeated. Is that unbelievable? That's two million people, man. <laughs> Holy shit. I, it, it, it makes January 6th look like a picnic. Do you think that the whole world's not pissed off at the United States and, and uh, Israel for the genocide that's taking place in Palestine? I mean, or Gaza, I should say. Oh, man. And, well, and getting back to Nikki, uh, she's got the LinkedIn uh, Reed Hoffman and Charles uh, Koch uh, from, from Koch. Uh, they're the ones that are funding her campaign. So if you didn't know that the deep state or the, uh, the, the elite class is funding her campaign, now you know. So uh, and, and it, it's just beyond me that people are funding her, her, her situation. So let's just keep going. So uh, I, this, this was funny because uh, somebody named uh, Joe Biden Dark Branded. <laughs> Isn't that a great nickname? Dark Branded. Uh, and he did the, uh, he, well, he gave his speech at the, what was it, Valley Forge. And uh, and he talked about, uh, well, it, it was basically a divisionary uh, or a divisive speech about how MAGA Republicans are the bane of the United States existence and uh, and how the uh, there was an insurrection that took place on January 6th, which is total bullshit. Nobody even had a gun. Have I have described an insurrection to you so many times? An insurrection, you bring up tanks, you line up the Capitol Police, and then boom, you blow them away. You know, bombs are going off, buildings blowing up, explosions everywhere, buildings toppling down. That's an insurrection. It's not a bunch of people walking through the damn Capitol building <laughs> with FBI agents. Oh, by the way, there's a great uh, Tucker Carlson video. You got to check it out. Um, where he uh, meets with one of the congressmen who's been investigating January 6th. Why in the hell were even doing all of this? I mean, it was obviously a setup, but he found out there was about 200 FBI agents in the crowd, and they'd been setting up the Proud Boys and all of them, the oath, oath, what oath takers or whatever they are. Uh, it was all just a, a setup, and I said that from the very beginning. And uh, and then of course Biden in his speech said that he attended the Capitol Police funerals. There were no Capitol Police that died that day. I think there was one guy that had a heart attack. Of course, you know, the poor woman that got shot, uh, uh, Ashley Babbitt, you know, uh, she deserved uh, a much greater uh, response uh, than, than what happened. So uh, uh, let's just keep going. So Mike Pence is over in Israel signing missiles uh, that are going to kill women and children in Gaza. Thank God Mike Pence, uh, you know, can you believe he was vice president of the United States for a while? Well, and at least he's off the ballot now. I mean, my God, this guy is, he promotes himself as a Christian. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be near this guy. I'd just punch him right in the nose. I, I couldn't be around this guy. Uh, but yeah, he's signing uh, bombs that are going into Gaza. I, did you even know this piece of news? Lord Austin, in the hospital for days after a complication in an operation that he had. And the news media doesn't even report on it. <laughs> I mean, it's just insane. The news blackout that we all live under. Isn't it, isn't it crazy? I, we don't know shit, do we? I mean, my God, we, we, we're all mushrooms. We're all mushrooms that exist in the forest, and the news media doesn't tell us anything. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Well, the Hooties, uh, I guess the number right now, the number that I got is they've done 25 attacks on commercial shipping. And, of course, if you didn't follow the news, uh, the, the Americans, uh, they caught them in one attack. Uh, they attacked the, the gunboats that were coming out. Uh, they killed 10. Of course, as the Hooties uh, or the Yemen fighters want to call it, the uh, martyrs, they killed 10 of them. And, uh, and, and a couple, well, it might have been one or two of the boats escaped uh, getting, getting away from the helicopters, which is surprising. I would think that those helicopters would have been able to chase. Because when you look at the boats, I mean, it's just like when I used to have my ski boat, that's what these boats look like. <laughs> They're not real sophisticated boats. It's not like, of course, they might have a machine gun mounted on them, you know. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, they're just regular boats. I, it, so it surprises me. Um, so what has happened with all of this activity is that uh, the shipping companies and the insurance companies, uh, basically, we're going to pay twice what we used to pay for all the goods that were coming through that area, the Red Sea. And uh, I mean, that, that's going to that's gonna hurt our pockets here in the United States, and it's going to hurt uh, Western countries around the world. Uh, it certainly won't hurt Russia because they let the Russian boats go through <laughs> and they let the Chinese boats go through, but not the United States and not Israel. Uh, anything going to Israel, the Houthis are stopping. So 10 martyrs uh, wounded in that day. Um, so then we've got ISIS backed, uh, uh, well, I, well, supposedly ISIS. I, I thought it was probably Israeli Mossad. Um, they, of course, blew up about 210 people at uh, Soleimani's uh, funeral inauguration. Uh, let's, let's watch that video now. So that's that's the people mourning uh, uh, Soleimani. Well, and those are the people killed in the explosion. Uh, and it, it, it's been blamed on ISIS. But of course, ISIS is a U.S.-backed uh, militia group. So really, they're blaming it on the United States. And uh, then we get into uh, some crazy shit. <laughs> Holy moly. A Miami mall here in Florida, where I am. Uh, it, they were fighting aliens uh, down in a, in a mall down there. And like a hundreds, hundreds of police cars descended on this mall uh, because of these huge 10-foot aliens that were marching around the mall. Uh, now, they said that it was just a riot among kids. Now, why would you need hundreds of police cars if it was just a riot among kids? No, it was, this was an alien attack. I mean, you know, but you know, believe what you want. I, I, I just thought it was a cool piece of news. Uh, your new car average price is $48,000. Who the bleep can afford forty eight thousand dollars for a car oh my god i mean i i i i can't even imagine that all right let's finish off the video with a couple of bookmarks uh, that i've got from x uh, i i was surprised uh, my friend uh, that uh, says that that the israelis didn't kill anybody uh, in that uh, uh, concert with apache helicopters that i'm mistaken that in cnn reported everything correctly I guess I'll have to research that. Uh, you let me know. Were Israeli Apache helicopters shooting up all the people in the in the fields uh, on October 7th, or was that just strictly Hamas coming over in their gliders uh, shooting down into the public? Uh, because from what I saw from the tops of the cars, uh, a simple uh, AK-47 wasn't going to do the damage to those cars that I saw. Uh, that, that was Apache helicopters, but just my opinion. So uh, this is General Mike Flynn, and we already talked about this, but I thought he put it this. Who is writing these blatant lies for Joe? This is so outrageous, there's no way they believe any of this is true. Of course, leftist Democrat lunatics will believe it. 
They know none of it is, yet they are allowing this apparently partial, demented, elderly man to state a lie. And then, of course, Jill and I attended the funerals of police officers who died as a result of January 6th, Joe Biden and his speech. We talked about that already, but I, I, I thought Flynn put it very, very, very nice. Ah, uh, the Trump train. Do you think that Michael Byrd should be charged with the murder for unjustly shooting and killing Ashley Babbitt on January 6th? Yes or no? Well, uh, obviously he should. Uh, in fact, but he was rewarded as a hero by the Democrats. That, that tells you the demented mind of Democrats. And then we got Simplicity is the thinker. Ukraine is outraged at the growing size of its cemeteries. <laughs> Tell me our deputies are all sharing money, selling land. They can't eat anything. How... Where is justice? Why are our eyes guys dying? And then it just goes on. From, well, that's that's from the video that he posted. But uh, isn't it surprising that it took over a million dead soldiers to come back before the Ukrainian citizens thought, well, you know, maybe maybe this is not a bad, a good idea to be fighting the Russians. <laughs> of course, they're going to continue to die. I don't know. What can you say? Uh, this is Megatron. The Middle East is on the brink of a major regional war for sure. Today's attack in Iran, we already posted that video, in which more than 210 people have officially died so far, is the only one such major blow to Iran in the last few days. First, Israel, probably with the green light of the United States, killed the Iranian general, Mossafi, in an airstrike in Syria. So that was a provocation. Yesterday killed the leader of Hamas in the capital of Lebanon, Beirut. And today, the Mossad. According to Iran officials, although Israel uh, has denied this, carried out a terrorist attack in Iran and caused a massacre of over 210 dead and many injured. The terrorist attack was carried out with a briefcase bombs, which are, which were detonated remotely by remote control, a technologic, a technology typical of the Mossad. And I, I already posted on this uh, on my X account, but uh, at least it'll be in this video. And so, of course, in addition, the United States and some of its vassal states have sent a final warning to the Houthis of Yemen. If they do not stop attacks on ships uh, heading towards Israel, they will bear the consequences. So see, we can see the war is going to escalate. Uh, once they bomb the Houthis, uh, we could get uh, Hezbollah kicking up in the north uh, there, Ukraine. They, they might increase their activity. Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how far, you know, when you've got 210 dead people, in Iran, I mean, it's just a matter of time. So uh, this is why Iran is currently being provoked to the maximum. Currently, the situation in the Middle East is very tense, to say the freaking least. Uh, Leo Terrell, stupid savages. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to try to get this on the video. This is a group of Muslim men in Pakistan that are eating an Israeli flag after ripping it to shreds. And I'm just going to kind of try to play this. All right, that, that's just crazy. That's it. Peace out. Stay free. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is That Cybersec Guy. That Cyber SEC Guy. I'm also on Getter. 
and Truth Social. On Getter, it's the same as X. That CyberSec guy, and on Truth Social, it is that cybersecurity guy. Also do minimal postings on Telegram at The World Burning. The World Burning on Telegram. I'm limited to two gigabytes there, so I don't post often unless it's a short video. I also do videos on outdoor activity because I'm into of hiking mainly. But it's Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. That is my main channel for outdoor activity. But I also have a playlist on YouTube called Hiking, Biking, and Camping in the United States. Lastly, I do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products. On Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, it is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.